jumping into how micro frontends are changing the way big companies build their frontends. These big all-in-one monolith system comes with a lot of headaches, like everything being connected too tightly, teams getting blocked, and tricky deployments. Micro frontend fix that by splitting things into a smaller parts, separated parts. That way, it is easier to manage and scale. This shift isn't just some new trend, it's really a future for the modern apps. And with the AI stepping in, imagine the tools that auto suggest front end layouts based on your user behavior pattern, it closer than you think. Let's take a look at why monolith front ends are tough. When things are tightly connected, changing one part can break others. That makes updates risky. Then you are got team bottleneck. When a lot of teams have to work on the same code, they get in each other ways. And deployments, they need a ton of testing and perfect timing, which makes the whole thing stressful. Over time, this builds up a technical depth and everything slow down. Micro frontend helps by letting you build a small separated part that don't mess with each other. Micro frontends are all about breaking things into smaller parts, each with its own clear job. Each part work on its own and can use its own tools. That means a team can pick whatever framework and the libraries work best for them. They can also fully own a section of the product from building to launching it. And because each part can be launched on its own, things move faster and there are fewer dependencies to deal with. It's a great way to give teams more control and speed things up. And in the future, AI could even help spot which part of your monolith are ideal for splitting based on code complexity and team velocity. When building micro frontend, there are some important ideas to follow. First is domain driven design. That means we split the app based on real business areas on each part. Make sense? And fit together well. Next is loose coupling, which just means that different parts don't rely too much on each other. So they can grow and change without breaking things. Resilient integrations means if one part goes down, the rest will work fine. And finally, a team ownership means each other in the charge of their pieces from building to shipping it. That kind of ownership helps team move faster and try new things. And in the future, AI power assistance could even guide teams through a domain modeling based on user flow and feature requests. There are three main way to build micro frontends. First, web component. These are browser-friendly customer events. They use something called Shadow DOM to keep things separate and they works with any framework. Second is module federation, which comes with a Webpack file. It let different apps share JavaScript on the fly, which is great for loading only what you need. And lastly, the server-side composition. This is when the backend put together the different part into one page, mostly PHP language. It's awesome for SEO and fast loading. So it works well for the public websites. We also seeing early tools that use machine learning to recommend which strategy, web components, model federation, or server-side composition best fit your app based on traffic and usage pattern. Let's talk results. Teams using micro frontend often cut their deployment time by 60%. That's a big deal. Around 70% of teams say they have more freedoms since they don't need to check in with everyone else for every changes. Rigs drop by 40% because changes are smaller and more focused. And the best of all, releases really speed triples. These numbers aren't just a theory. They come from the real companies and the real project. You get faster innovation, safer changes, and happier user. Some teams are already using AI tools to test their front end automatically, catching edge cases and traditional test misses in those cases. Performance is super important. Start by loading the most important stuff first. This is called progressive lazy loading. Wait to load the rest until it needed. 
keep file sizes small by sharing common stuff instead of repeating it. You share component libraries to keep things consistent and avoid redoing work and set up real-time performance monitoring. It's not just about keeping the site online. It's about knowing how each part is doing so you can improve things quickly. And in the future, the AI power observability tools are getting smart enough to predict performance dips happen. Big companies are already seeing a great result with Microfront. HSBC redesigned their online banking using their setup and teams were able to deploy faster and cut bugs by 70%. IKEA used micro front ends to build out product pages by category, and each team focused on their own sections, made it better for customers. Providence helped build a separate micro front end for a different part of their patient system, which helped their privacy rules and made update easier. This real story shows that micro front end really scales across all kinds of industries. Some enterprises are even starting to use machine learning to personalize micro front end content based on the real time user behavior. Of course, nothing is perfect. Sometimes the user experience can feel messy if different teams design things in a different way, and you can fix this with the shared design systems common components, libraries, and a UX team to keep everything aligned. Another issue is performance and hit per performance hits and when combining part at runtime. But you can solve that by optimizing how things load and caching share modules. And even though micro front-end led teams work independently, they still need to talk, clear API, good documentation, and regular team check-ins. Hello keep everything working together. In future, we may see a web driven code in LinkedIn that ensure every team stick to shared design guideline. Switching to micro front end is a step-by-step -step process. First, take a good look at your current setup and figure out where the natural boundaries are. Then pick a simple low risk project to try things out. Set up your pipeline and tools to get ready for the future. After that, break things up slowly, moving pieces by pieces based on what makes the most sense for the business features. And keep checking in with your teams, watch how things perform and make improvement as you go. That way, your shift to the micro front end will be solid and long lasting. Imagine using machine learning to simulate different migration paths and pick a safest one based on predicted user impact. The future is looking awesome. Pretty soon, AI will help build and improve component on its own, saving ton of time. Smart tools will help you see how everything connect and suggest better way to link things up. Macro front end won't just power website; they support mobile apps, IoT devices, and even AR and that. And eventually, we'll, we will have a standard rules for how to connect macro front end across different companies and tools. We likely see AI recommending how your front end should adapt to new platform in a real time. Let's talk about WebAssembly or WASM for short. This is some next level technology. It runs super fast code, almost like a native app. Right in the browser, you can even use languages like C, C++ or Rust. WebAssembly runs safest in its own little sandbox. And so it's put, so it's fit perfectly with the way micro front end works. It's not just faster, it's safer and more flexible too, and secure. And with AI optimized compilers, even non-expert will be able to convert code into high performing WASM modules. So try it out. A powerful combination when you put micro front end and WebAssembly together, you are unlocking the whole new level of front end power. WebAssembly boost the speed of your most important features. Team can use whatever language suits all, suits their job best. And because WebAssembly is self safe contain, it fit well with the micro front end ideas of keeping things separate. This combo set you up for the future from mobile apps to AR platform. Start by finding the lowest part of your apps and try adding a WebAssembly tool 
speed things up. We are heading toward AI models that can recommend when to switch a JS module to WSM for peak efficiency. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this deep dive into micro fronting. I hope you pick some useful ideas, not just what they are, but how to actually use them. Whether you're just exploring or already on this path, micro frontend, especially when you pair them with tools like WebAssembly, give you the way to build a front end that are best flexible and ready for whatever next. And the next pair is maybe a AI copilot that helps architect your front end from scratch based on business goal and user data. So try it out. Thank you.